well, I could water cool my computer with one of these, when I found out that a local data center was just throwing away this Uniflare Inro ACRC100 server cooler, I knew what had to be done. We're at 500 watts, 995 watts. I th oh my God, it, <laughs> look at this, it broke. It just says zero watts. Yeah. I didn't know how complicated it was going to be. Something tells me that a G1 quarter PC water cooling fitting isn't going to exactly just thread into this bad boy. But hey, that's what friends are for, right? So let's drill into this and hope that we don't screw anything up. Oh, just like I screwed up that segue to our sponsor. Cleaning the house can be a dangerous exercise. Last year I used Robo Rock SA Max V Ultra, which vacuums and mops all in one go. It loves to clean so much it even cleans itself. Good job, Rocky. <laughs> wow, look at this thing. You can fit so much radiator in this bad boy. But the way that they're using it is not the way that you would expect. This is a chilled water modular air conditioning unit. That's right. It is intended to cool the air in the data center rather than cooling the servers directly. It's available in either a half rack, that's the one we're looking at here, or a full rack model. And this older one, discontinued in 2016, goes for about $6,500. And if you look, there's all kinds of indicators that this is not your regular water cooling system. For one thing, it's got these drip trays all over the place and this insulation that seems to indicate that they are expecting this to collect a lot of condensation from the ambient air. That's because this water in supply pipe here is meant to take coolant that's as low as seven degrees Celsius. It's an air conditioner in the sense that it takes the hot air that is blown out of the servers on either side of it, sucks it into the back, pulls it through this radiator that's got super chilly water running through it, and then blows it back out the front, cooled to a reasonable temperature where it can be da -da 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 -da, recycled into those server racks next to it. The only problem is, how do you get the water so cold? There are a number of solutions to that. You can use good old fashioned refrigeration, evaporative cooling. Here in Canada, we just plumb directly into the nearest glacier. But realistically, we have a different goal and we're not gonna worry about any of that. Wow, do these ever look like finger chompers? The problem is our cable is just so short, but it's got all the slack. Yeah. What are they doing? Causing me nothing but discord right now. Ah. I didn't get that joke. Oh, Slack, Discord, ah, oh, gotcha. What? <laughs> Boop. Oh, wow, she just fires up like that? <laughs> it feels great. That does feel great. Oh, there we go. Hey, in row. Okay, four. cool. Check this out. Check this out. 530 liters per second. That's piddly. So we have the password? We... No. Oh. This is why we had to look up resetting the password. I see. Well, I guess we're going to need to rip this off. Wear eye protection this time. Hey! See you later, buddy. Look at that. Take that, lockpicking lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, we have no beef. Great channel. In order to reset the password, we're gonna need this serial to USB-A to USB-C because modern laptops. JK, I use a framework. I can totally use USB-A. Let's go. Boom. Investment disclosure. Also back here, we've got some of the enterprisey nature of this on full display. We've got network control and redundant power supplies. Press the reset button on the back of the electrical panel. Okay. Immediately press enter, repeatedly if necessary, to display the username prompt. <laughs> hey, username! It's a uh, me. Mario, no. No, please choose a regular username. I, I'm, I'm working on it. I, I think I pressed enter a lot of times oh. and it's really confused. Boom, we're in. The mainframe is hacked, boys. Username, what, no. I'm gonna go admin, admin. That's great. Enter new administrator authentication phrase. Admin. Tech tips. Oh my God, I didn't successfully do it. <laughs> 
you want me to go get shot? No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's done. Bad authentication phrase. I can't just put admin as the authentication phrase. Hey, that's a good thing. I know, but I just, I don't care right now, you know? Minimum 15 characters. This is really dumb. Oh my god. Can I just set it to full speed? Yeah, try. Fan speed control. Manual. Manual, let's go! Oh! Here we go! Look at his shorts! <laughs> 1200 liters a second! <laughs> and you want to replace these fans? Look at how I can barely hear you talking! I'm, we're yelling! Yeah! I'm right next to you, 13, four, like almost 1400 liters a second! That's the power of the. whatever the f this is 100 Now, of course, it's not going to do basically anything with the side panels off. These fans are going to pull the air from the point of least resistance, which is right here. So you got to put the side panels on. You want it nice and sealed up here. In fact, I'm willing to bet that is one of the reasons these panels have this foam on the inside of them. We've got caps on the secondary supply and return, right? Yeah. So we don't got to deal with anything down there. All we've got to deal with is this supply and this return. Neither of which appears to be plumbed with any kind of threading standard that Justin was able to identify. Thankfully, we've got this. I've never brazed before. <laughs> oh, sure, that makes sense. Fun fact, I've also never used a Sawzall before. It's called a Sawzall because it saws all. <laughs> Are you even trying this week? <laughs> that joke's actually from a Nicolas Cage movie. That's not even a joke. That's just why it's called that. What's our level of concern about the metal shavings and the power supplies down there? It's covered, it's fine. So what, I just go for it? Hmm. Hey, uh, Justin, do you mind just putting a hand on this? Okay, I actually don't want your hand right there though. Yeah, there's good. Uh, yeah, that's better. Wow, I can see why burglars like these. Man, how'd I do that so smoothly the first time? Okay, Justin, you're up. Okay, I'm trusting you, don't take out my hands. Whoa, uh, whoa, you should really hold them further no, away. No, I'm good, I'm good. He's, oh, he's cutting away from my hands, it's fine. It's not, okay. All right, I feel less bad. You had a bit of trouble getting it started too. What's next? We got some, oh, sick! Dang, man, that looks professional. Check this out. Justin made G1 quarter threaded end cap things that I guess we got at Home Depot or something. What do I put these on though? Well, on one of these, but you're gonna have to braze the other end on to those copper pipes first. Nice. What could go wrong? Well, we got some of this schmoo. All right, so what you'll wanna do is just heat it up until it starts to discolor, get it nice and even and then push the solder into the joint. Oh yeah. And it should wick all the way around. All right. Do 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 do. I do 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 do. Oh yeah, no, no, that's good. That's supposed to happen. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I mean, yeah, what's it even dripping on? Couldn't be that harmful. Looks great. Well, <laughs> very generous, thank you, but it looks on there. Okay, I may not have put quite enough Teflon tape on this, but I guess we're about to find out. Now, it should just be like hooking it up to a computer regularly. Okay. You know, you've done that lots of times. Yeah. What, what is this? Oh, uh, this is for the pump. It's for these edges. These are the ones you want. Oh, right. We should yeah. show you our pump. And, uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> See, that kind of makes sense because with the size of the tubing and the volume of water that you're expecting to move through a system like this, you need a serious pumping solution. And these things, because they have no idea what your deployment is gonna look like, don't have any pumping of their own. Wait, so all that power supply is just for those fans. Man, look at them though. <laughs> look at these fans. Now, how yucktastic are we expecting the water in this thing to be? They should have been serviced regularly. 
Yeah, but I think we all see the state of the inside of this that's, with rust and shmoo everywhere. That's the inside of this, not the inside of the pipes. We'll see how bad the rad is. So maybe for the start, we don't actually put it through the computer. We just circulate it and see sure. what we get. Yeah, that sounds good. Are the O-rings going to seal against this kind of rough thing? Oh, we're going to use the two and a half millimeter hex key, which is on there already. Turn the flow control actuator to the fully open position. And what's the fully open position? The other way. Oh, God. Ah, maybe if someone hadn't gotten solder all over it. Oh, God. Oh, God. She's turning on her own. The screwdriver's going. Nice. Open the two-way supply valve and the two-way bypass shutoff valve. Okay. Using a two and a half, so that's probably these guys. So that's in a weird not open or closed state. So open it. There you go. All right, here we go, Pumpy. Let's turn our nice prime Pumpy pump Pumpy McPumperson here. There we go. Woo! Look at that. That's pretty clean. Actually, yeah. Right? They did service it. Yeah, you're not wrong. So we'll get the air bubbles out, let it go for a little while, and then hook it up to a computer. Freaking A, man. Okay, now before we do that, I want to play around with these valves a little bit, because I don't know. I, <laughs> it's not that I don't believe you. It's just that I think you're full of I mean, shit, you right know? now it's working, so. Right, but then I do this. And it slows to a trickle and stops. Okay, all right, all right. So that was open. Look, we're, we're learning, okay? Sure. We're learning together. Yeah. Okay, That's what's this slow. boy? What's this boy do? This is a bypass to bypass the radiators. Oh, okay. There's no valve for the radiators. But if for whatever reason you wanted to not run through the rads, okay. then you can bypass it here. But we want this closed because we don't want it going straight from water in to water out. There you go. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Everything makes sense. By the way, it's leaking, I think. I understand why nobody else wanted them. But boy, do I ever want them. This is awesome. Hey, look at that. Wow. Magnetic cable management. Let's go, LTTstore.com. <laughs> we're, just, we're just plumbing it up to the top of the thing. <laughs> yeah. Why not? In this machine, we've got a Threadripper Pro 7995WX. This is a 96 core processor that'll suck back, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of like, 400 watts or something stupid like that. And, and we've got an RTX 4090, one of the little itty bitty cute ones. A more practical deployment for us, since we're not gonna have water blocked servers like this machine right here, would be to just take the hot air in the server room, use that hot air to heat up water, then carry that air somewhere else and then dissipate the heat. But for the purposes of just kind of showing you guys that it does work, this will do us nicely. Do we have any zip ties? Yeah. Oh wow. my God, that would totally maybe work. Andrew. So, hey, okay, there you go. All right, good enough. Magnets. <laughs> yeah, we'll just, let's, let's see, let's see. Let it cook. Oh my God, cook nothing. It's running at 44 degrees, 42 degrees. <laughs> so we were gonna go with a 14900KS originally. Yeah. But Jake figured that the uh, IHS would be too small. That's not gonna tell us the full story because realistically, something like this is about the sheer volume of heat that it can move, right? It's not about how well can it deal with a concentrated heat source like this, where to your point, just the size of the die and the bottleneck of moving that heat away through the IHS is going to have more of an impact than the actual like, cooling capacity of this giant unit here. But in terms of if we were to hook like half a dozen computers up to this thing, it should conceivably be able to do it. Whole office water cooling, anyone? Did I mention already that we uh, might have gotten a few of them? <laughs> now that this is running, the only reasonable way to benchmark it is to, I don't know, run it for an extremely long period of time and see if it... <laughs> Sorry, I'm running 92 threads of Prime 95. This is amazing. Um, and see if it heats up. So we've got our little temperature graph on Fermark here that's at a solid 46. It's gone up two degrees and I haven't even turned the fans on yet. I have a feeling this is just gonna be dead flat. But let's go ahead. We're gonna get it fired up and it's quitting time. So I'll see you guys on the morrow. And good morning. It's been about 14 hours and things are looking real good. CPU usage still 100% from Prime 95. Fermark's doing this weird thing where it's kind of hitching for a long time sometimes, but uh, 
it's still using 93 to 99% power. And you can see, if I move the window around, <laughs> the, the, the render works properly, so I don't know what the heck it's doing, but really, that's not what we care about. We're looking at temps here. We've reached a maximum of 56 degrees, which means with one system on here, we are still looking at coolant temperatures that are barely lukewarm to the touch. That is fantastic, water-tastic. The last thing I wanna check is CPU temperatures, which I'm expecting to be, oh, a little higher than this. Wow, uh -huh. <laughs> 40 degrees. I mean, sure, these Threadripper chips, yeah, they kick out a lot of power, but they're so big that, like I was talking about before, the size of the die isn't as much of a heat transfer bottleneck. That is, uh, that is fantastic. <laughs> Uh, what kind of power is it drawing? Woo! 350 watts! I was out yesterday when they were filming this crazy thing and being the person that sourced them, I had to see it for myself. Except I found out that Linus didn't bother turning PBO on and I'm like, these Threadrippers could draw like a thousand watts by clicking one button in the BIOS. So we did that. I think we start with Cinebench? Yeah. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> It's drawing 800 watts. <laughs> but let's try 2024. Just for reference, with PBO on on this CPU, it idles at 150 watts, doing nothing. 450, 600? 600? What? I don't know how optimized this is. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't use like, well, okay. I mean, it's running at 4.64 gigahertz on every single core. It's estimating like an 8,000 point score in 2024. <laughs> For reference, a 32 core second gen Threadripper is 1,200 points. <laughs> this is the real test. Prime 95 smallest FFTs, hyper threaded. This has AVX 512, which means it is going to, <laughs> it is going to hurt. We're at 500 watts, 995 watts. I th oh my God, it, <laughs> look at this, it broke. It just says zero watts. In the BIOS, we had set the enhancement to limit it to 90 degrees. So once it gets to that point, it kind of starts throttling down a bit. Not to say that 1100 watts is really <laughs> throttling down a bit, but this is just actually ridiculous. Uh, it's still not running at peak airflow. We're definitely running into a situation where we're just limited by the thermal transfer of the block in the IHS, but it's, uh, the inlet temperature is 20.7 degrees. So we're not even like above ambient really at all. And the fans are only running at it's like 900 liters per second through this thing. And it can do 1400, right? So this is too much. I don't know how many thread rippers we need to hook up to like make this hurt, but I imagine it's a lot. In conclusion then, big fans, very effective for cooling. See you at the next tech tip. Oh, but not before I get some help with this mess from our sponsor. Oh no, let's suck out with Roborock. Whether it's that friend who eats with their mouth open or who don't take their shoes off, SAMXV Ultra can handle all the mess without ruining your friendship. Hair, crumbs, or oh, mystery powder. Nothing is left behind after a party. Thanks to its hyperforce system with 10,000 pascals of suction power. It can also mop with 60 degree hot water. And the detergent dispenses automatically at the all in one deck. Roborock is ranked number one for robotic vacuum sales worldwide and it comes with a five year warranty. Roborock S8 Max V Ultra will be available on April 22nd. We have the link below. If you guys enjoyed this video, why not check out the one where we did a precursor to what this will become in my basement setting up radiators inside and outside to move heat out of the building.